Good morning. This is the Keeping It Real Sunday School class from Cornerstone Baptist Church in Richland, Missouri. I'm Dr. Max Thornsbury and I'm the teacher and my wife Brenda will be reading the scriptures this morning from the authorized version, the original King James Version of the Bible. We are continuing our study about mentoring Christian mentoring, and am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Mentoring? Mentoring? Yes. yes. Um, and today we're going to look at the mentoring of Barnabas to Saul. And we always think of Saul as being a mentor with Timothy and Titus and all that. You mean Paul? And then Saul becomes Paul, yes. yes. Saul was his Jewish name, and the Lord <coughs> changed his name to Paul, which was a, um, a Greek name so that he could take his ministry to the Gentiles. Uh, he uh, coney him, they run him off, and, and he shook his dust off his sandal and said, I'm going to the Gentiles. Anyway, we're going to read about Paul's conversion experience in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the goads. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Now there's one of those dead gum three days and three night fast again. Yeah. I guess after Jesus has spoke to you, maybe you'd be able to do that a little easier. Well, I don't know. It would be... Goodness gracious. He was People in have no shock. idea. People have no idea. They have no idea. I, I, that They have no idea. I challenge anybody watching this video to fast three days and three nights and spend your time in prayer. It'll be a rare person that ever makes it. I can tell you that. From food and water, yeah. mind you. Yeah. Been out working all day. It's 106 degrees here. You, how are you going to fast from water? I've been drinking ever since I come in the house. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this Saul, who was working for the Sanhedrin, going around capturing people that claimed to believe in Jesus, bringing them back to Jerusalem, where obviously some were stoned, like Stephen, where he stood and held the coats and, and fully supported what they did to the poor man, who probably gave the best sermon in the entire Bible, and he is a deacon. Mm -hmm. oh, How about well, that? There you go. You're How in good that? company. That's right. And... Uh, here he is. He's in Damascus. We're not going to read all of those verses. We're going to go <clears throat> jump down in chapter 9. But eventually, God, or the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to Ananias, told him where Paul would be at the, remember where he was? At the street? No. Straight. Oh. The street straight. And go to him, and he prayed for him, and scales fell from his eyes. And immediately, uh, Saul was baptized and went about preaching all through Damascus. Now, they tried to kill him in Damascus because of that, because he's preaching in the synagogues, and he's pre preaching Christ is Messiah, and it, he's preaching the exact same message for which he's gone there to get people and drag them back to the court system in Jerusalem, and the Jews try to kill him. Mm -hmm. And he's let down, if you remember, by the wall in a basket, and he eventually makes his way to Jerusalem, and there is where our story is going to be in, begin again in Acts 9, <clears throat> verses 26 through 29. 
And when Saul was come unto Jerusalem, he tried to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, and brought him to the apostles, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. So uh, here again, every time Paul begins to preach the word, somebody comes against him. Uh, Barnabas is a wealthy Jew of the tribe of Levi. Obviously well versed in the Bible. The tribe of Levi is where the priests come from. Uh, may have even been from a family of uh, priests that were scattered around the empire where they conducted services in the synagogues. Maybe his dad was a priest, maybe he was. But he has become a Christian and he has been to Damascus and he knows what the Apostle Paul was doing, uh, saw at this time. And so he, it says here in the old King James, he essayed to join himself to the disciples but they were all afraid of him and didn't believe what he said. Now, the Apostle Paul could be a very persu persuasive person, but because of his history, they refused to allow him into their inner circle, and primarily because they were afraid of another Judas, mm -hmm. someone who was going to betray them. This was dangerous, what they were doing. They uh, were going to do it regardless, but it was a dangerous thing, and the Apostle Saul had already proven that the Apostle Paul, or Saul, had already proven, had already proven that he was efficient and effective. Notice what it says, he said, and he breathed, read verse 1 of chapter 9. I'll give you some idea of how significant he was. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and the slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Now, that's pretty serious business, that's, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That means Very. those people being taken back to Jerusalem, <clears throat> some were being killed. Yeah. Now, the Roman Empire did not allow him to do it, but it didn't stop him to stoning Stephen. We don't know a lot about Barnabas. We know he came from Cyprus. Um, we know that he was wealthy. He had property. He sold the property, gave the money to the disciples. And here he is. His name was actually Jose, J-O-S-E-S, -S, but that is a synonym for Joseph. His actual name was Joseph. But his surname was Barnabas, and that means his nickname was Barnabas. And what Barnabas means is a son of encouragement. And he was an encouraging person. He had a personality that was always positive and always encouraging. Uh, we'll see how that comes forward here in a little bit. And he stands up for, for Saul, mm -hmm. for the Apostle Paul. And, and they took his word for it. And it says that he was with them coming in and going out in Jerusalem. And he continued to speak boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so, Brenda, let's move on in our Bible readings um, to Acts 11. Now, there's some things that we need to talk about here. I'd like you to start reading in verse 19 of Acts 11 and read through 26. Now, they who were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they came, were come to Antioch, spoke unto the Greeks, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came, had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cling unto the Lord. For he was a righteous man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and many people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Sarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that for a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught many people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Antioch was a major city for the Roman Empire, uh, named after Antiochus Epiphanes, one of the generals of Alexander the Great. There were two Antiochs. I don't have a map here to point this out. If you look in your Bible, this is the one 
where Turkey comes out like that into the Aegean Sea and then comes back and meets the mainland like this, right at that point is the Antioch we're talking about, north of Damascus, north of Tarshish a little bit. It's in the, uh, the um, province called Syria by the, by the Romans. And uh, they caught wind, the disciples did, that there were people in Antioch that were seeking help and teaching, and so they send Barnabas there. Barnabas is well pleased with what he finds. He preaches the word. He says, I'm going to go to Tarsus and get my buddy Paul, and we'll come back. And what did they do when they went back? They spent a full year mm -hmm. teaching and preaching in Antioch, enough so that those who believed in the Messiah, who took Christ as the Lord and Savior, were actually called Christians first at Antioch. Mm -hmm. Now that is a Latin term, a, a Latin means of identifying who they were, meaning they were followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, a very important thing. Now, how many years do you think it transpired, Brenda, between the time that Paul, if you go back and read a little bit further before we get to this point in Acts, you'll find that they tried to kill Paul in Jerusalem and the disciples sent him back to his hometown to minister there. And he went back to Tarsus. That's where Barnabas found him, right? Mm -hmm. When he wanted to find him, he went to Tarsus. He had a business there. He was a tent maker. Um, and how many years do you think transpired between the time that Paul left Jerusalem, fear for his life, went to Tarsus, and the time that Barnabas came to get him to take him to Antioch? Well, I bet you can tell me that. I can. It's 10 years. Oh, okay. Now, if you take the three years that the Apostle Paul had spent in the wilderness before, and I'd like for you to, to read that, I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 1 and read verse 1 through 7. Galatians chapter 1. And here the Apostle Paul later in life is writing a a letter to the churches that are in Galatia, which is kind of the north central part of what we call Turkey now, which was uh, Asia Minor, the province of Asia Minor. Okay, Galatians what? 1, 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of God, er, grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul was a severe taskmaster. Um, go to Galatians chapter 2, I think, and read the first few verses of chapter 2. Then fourteen years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation, and communicated unto them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them who are of reputation, lest by any means I should run. All right, I'm missing the verses about um, called by Christ. Um, it should be right there in verse 1 or 2. Let me pull it up here. Galatians 2. Yeah, did I say two? Yes. Um, doggone it, I should have looked that up. Uh, starting with 1 through 11, or chapter 1, verse 11, and read down until I tell you to stop. Okay. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my manner of life in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. 
But when it pleased God, whom separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Then 17 and 18. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them who were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Okay. Now, there the Apostle Paul is indicating that he spent a full three years in Arabia. And what was he doing in Arabia? What was taking place there? And where is Arabia? Well, Arabia is the Sinai Peninsula. Same location where the Ten Commandments were given. So what uh, what was taking place there? Well, you read it. To reveal his son in me? No. Oh. Go back up to verse 11. Read verse 11 again. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not after man. Who's it after? Well, it's after Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's been taken there to get instruction for the... Lord Je from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all the disciples spent three and a third years with Christ. Mm -hmm. A disciple has to be, not a disciple, an apostle, has to be called by Christ and appointed by Christ, and it has to be public. So the Apostle Paul is now the twelfth apostle. Judas has hung himself. He has been appointed by Christ, called by Christ, and now he's being instructed by Christ. Ten years have taken place here, have passed from the time that he has run out of Jerusalem. The apostles seem to Tarsus. And my professor believes that from early church tradition and from writings that he has reviewed, that he spent another 11, 12 years in instruction with the Lord. And so his total time of instruction with the Lord could very well have been 12 years, might have been 13 years. Because he talks about down there 13 years, 14 years later, he went to Jerusalem and spent 15 days with Peter. Um, that's three times as much instruction from the Lord Jesus Christ for the Apostle Paul than any other apostle. Oh, yes. Three times. Mm -hmm. I give you some idea why he is author of two-thirds of the New Testament. Yes. And why he is such a taskmaster. And what he has high expectations of those that have come to know the Lord. Now, we're going to move on, Brenda, into a issue here. They spent a year in Antioch. Uh, many people come to the Lord, taught, preached, led people to the Lord, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Go to Acts 15 now and read verse 36 through 40. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought it not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Now initially this relationship between Barnabas and Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, was Barnabas mentoring Paul. That has all turned the other way now. Mm -hmm. Paul is senior and he's mentoring Barnabas and Barnabas is refusing to take his advice. Mm -hmm. Now what had happened is when they were in Antioch and when they were making some of their first missionary uh, endeavors, John Mark left them. Now John Mark, he went back to Jerusalem, the Bible says. Uh, John Mark was the nephew of Barnabas. At least that's what we gather from the Word. And I have a, go to Acts 13 and read verse 13 just to set this up for us. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now this John is John Mark, and this is their first missionary journey, which they did all around there um, in that area, Antioch, up and a little bit into uh, the first journey wasn't quite as, or not nearly as extensive as second and third, nor his fourth when he went to Great Britain, which we have very little record of. 
John Mark left them. Now he's just a kid here, Brenda. He's not a he's not a in the same age category as Barnabas and Paul. He is a relative of Barnabas, and Barnabas is called Barnabas because he's an encourager. And he sees value in John Mark. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul now, who is above Barnabas, he's now the mentor, and Barnabas is supposed to listen to him, refuses to listen to him, and he takes John Mark and goes to Cyprus. And Cyprus is where Barnabas had his property. Probably, it's a, Cyprus even then was like a, a wealthy person vacation land where all these wealthy Greeks and Romans had their own little palaces and their summer palaces and the beaches, and they didn't have any... Um, boats and motors, but they had special sailing ships. They'd go there and spend a month. Um, that's the last we hear of Barnabas. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. That's the last mention of Barnabas's name in the Bible. Um, is it dangerous to oppose the Apostle Paul? Apparently so. <laughs> it appears so, doesn't it? Yeah. It appears so. Pretty dangerous to speak and take advice opposite of what the apostle who speaks for the Lord Jesus Christ himself says. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that he despised John Mark, because we're going to find here, if you turn to 1 Timothy, Brenda, and uh, might be 2 Timothy, I've got it written down here. Um, 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 11. Now, this is many years later, probably... Oh, my goodness, 15 years, 18 years later. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to, profitable to me for the ministry. Now, it doesn't mean the Apostle Paul was wanting to give up on John Mark. It's that the Apostle Paul said this is not the right time to be taking John Mark on these dangerous missions that we're on because he's already proven that he's not going to be able to stay it out. He's not tough enough to handle it. He's not going to stay the course. And it says here their contention was very sharp. Hmm. Well, if John Mark was Barnabas' nephew, you know, he's yeah. going to hold up for his family. Um, it's a real situation, mm -hmm. and it's reported in the Bible, and the Holy Spirit is revealed to us. But let me tell you, when the Apostle Paul speaks, unless he tells you I'm speaking for my own self, mm -hmm. you listen because he speaks for Christ. Every word that comes out of his mouth is just like Christ speaking the word himself. That's what an apostle is. He speaks for Christ. He has the authority of Christ. Uh, that's part of the problem with the Corinthian church is they failed to understand and realize that this authority that Paul had. Um, so... The role of mentor has reversed. Why do you think that it has reversed? Well, as you've already explained, um, Paul had direct teaching for many, many, many years, and he probably had a lot more insight than Barnabas did. He did, and he had the ability to understand what's going on. Back a little ways here, they're in... Uh, I think Iconium and this uh, uh, Bar Jesus sorcerer comes up and he's trying to witness to the, the head deputy, the head guy in charge of the city. And this Bar Jesus comes up and starts, you know, aggravating him. And Paul says, You lousy, no good son of the devil, you're going to be blind for a season. Immediately he goes blind. And the guy he was witnessing to immediately came to Christ. I bet. It's all the power and authority. I mean, this is what the power and authority of an apostle is. We can't even comprehend those things today. Uh, there are no apostles today. Everybody wants to say, well, they got a little A. Well, anybody that would call themselves an apostle, maybe they're doing the work of an apostle in that they are planting churches and they're trying to teach and they're trying to bring people to Christ. But there's only 12 apostles. And Judas hung himself. They drew... What's his name? Thaddeus mm -hmm. or Matthias, Matthias with a straw. Uh, might have been a really good guy, but Jesus didn't pick him. The next apostle is the apostle Paul, who Jesus picked and did so publicly. Um, so when you get to heaven and it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles' names being written on the foundation of heaven, I believe you'll see the apostle Paul's name written there. Mm -hmm. 
obviously a man of great authority, of great power, that God had uh, poured out His Spirit upon him. You'll notice that whenever Lord Jesus speaks to Ananias, what you didn't read out of the Scripture there, He tells Ananias, I must show him what great things he will suffer by taking the gospel to the Gentiles. I just uh, listened to a video this afternoon from the machine gun preacher. He said, I can tell you how you know if God is calling you to do something. The guy interviewed him and says, how's that? He says, you don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do it. He said, if it's, oh, goody, 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 it ain't from God. He said, I, yeah. can, I can almost give you that as 100%. When he calls you, he said, you'll think, oh, golly. Look what's going to happen to me. How am I going to? I don't want to do this. I'm not good enough. To, I'm not capable. I don't. You know, it's a call from God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let him know how much he's going to suffer for me. And boy, did he suffer. Stoned to death. Oh, my goodness. Just stoned unto death, the Bible says. Un unbelievable things that he suffered. And then had his head caught off by the ser sergeant of arms. With a sword or an axe, Brenda? Oh, with an axe. Ah, he was a he was a citizen of Rome, Roman and citizen. he had that right to be executed with one swift blow of the axe and not have his head hacked off with a sword like John the Baptist. Well, what are we together out of this lesson? First thing, don't ever go against the Apostle Paul. <laughs> All right, whatever he says in the Scripture, unless he tells you this is my opinion, man mm -hmm. ought to never marry. That was his opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, be hard to have any new babies and new souls for Christ if they followed that, right? Yeah. He, and, and, but he says, "My opinion: You want to serve the Lord, don't marry. Your 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 uh, you'll be divided between the Lord and your wife, and the Lord and your family. Um, but if he doesn't say it's my opinion, it's the word of God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ." He has enough years under his belt, under direct instruction, to have that authority. Mm -hmm. He is now the mentor. And next week we're going to study about how the Apostle Paul did mentor uh, Timothy and Titus in particular and called them his sons in the Lord. So what do we gather out of it? Um, be very careful. Do positions of mentorship change? Probably not like they did between Paul and Barnabas. Mm -hmm. You know, initially when you're raising your son, you're the boss, you're the big bull, and he's the little bull, right? Mm -hmm. And eventually you develop into where you take one another's advice. I taught my son everything he knows about <laughs> medicine, but every now and then I do call him up and ask his opinion. Yeah, well, right? He mentors know. me. Mm -hmm. They don't use the same dosages we use for no, some reason, so I little don't. things are a little bit different. I would say. But, uh, yeah, the relationship changes. I'm still his dad, though. Mm -hmm. Always will be. And he still shows me respect. Mm -hmm. But now I show him respect. So mentorship will change over time, correct? Sure. And it should. It should not divide, however. And in this case, Barnabas did not take the advice of the Apostle Paul, and it divided them. Mm -hmm. Let's not have mentorship that divides. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not expected to deal with the truth. If someone you're mentoring is having an affair with somebody else's wife, you don't just let it go so there's no division, no, right? You must address not. it. You must address it. And hopefully he'll be smart enough to take your advice. It's a, a complicated deal and not easily dealt with, and that's why sometimes it takes prayer. Can you imagine fasting three days and three nights from food and water? I tell you what, Brenda, it is just the most, I just can't imagine it. One day and I about died. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> See you all next week.